I think that's all very inspiring. We heard there's accessibility, we have in vivo cell therapy, and we hear bad on engineer, and also we heard scalability. It seems like we have a new North Star for this community to move forward. With that being said, actually, I want to have a question back to Jason and Christian, because right now we see this new technology come along. When do you think is possible for the cell therapy as a 100,000 treatment rather than a half million treatment. Is it possible? Is it realistic? What's the roadmap to get there? And also from Christian, from your perspective, what kind of innovation do you think can drive us to get there? Um, it's absolutely possible. I mean, I think <clears throat> the range of sticker price for today's autologous cell therapy is in the four to 500,000 range, gene therapies range up to almost $5 million. So there's a whole kind of range within cell and gene therapy, but the most vast majority of patients are getting treated with the, the first bucket, the autologous cell therapies. With work that we've done with companies, large pharma companies that have products in the market, automation and technologies like Ori has developed can deliver a 30 to 50% cost of goods savings off the top. So you implement it immediately, what you're doing now, no need to do anything else, just implement the technology. That alongside a throughput gain of about 10 times in the same footprint. So we get 10 times more doses at half the cost. That's a good start. There's lots of other things that need to happen as well. But being able to make more doses physically, today we treat globally about 5% of the available patient population. So all those sick people who get to the end of their journey with chemotherapy or other things, maybe they have leukemia or lymphoma, multiple myeloma, one of those uh, blood cancers, only about 5% globally are able to receive CAR T therapy. And that has a whole, for a whole bunch of reasons. A lot of it's logistical, some of it's geographical, some of it's cost. But if we can just singularly make more doses, make them more available for patients, and make them less expensively, then the opportunity is there to move them earlier into the treatment pathway. We've seen already a couple of VMS's products, so Brianzi, we have Yescarta, and we have Carvicti, all of which have received second-line therapy. So it's the second option for doctors to choose in their respective diseases. So earlier line of therapy is important for access, making them more available, just being able to physically make more doses, and to do so more cost effectively. Those are kind of basics, economics that are that are happening today as we speak, as these uh, developers implement new technologies. Yeah, I just wanted to amplify on the cost of goods, you know, back to betting on the engineers, you know, the cost of goods to make an autologous genetically engineered cell today is quite high. But there are so many easy ways to change that. I mean, I'll give you one example, lentiviral vector, which is the vector that's used to modify T cells. Historically, that was made in plastic, little plastic um, containers in very small scale, and it was stuck to the plastic. Now you can make that in 100 liter bio reactors, think brewing beer. You know, it brings the cost of that component down 95%. And you can just apply that mindset to everything about the manufacturing process, automation. A lot of the cost is people. You can automate that. So I think cost of goods has a very easy line of sight to drop it by 90%. That starts to get into the more traditional pharmaceutical type product cost of goods. Then you brought up just complexity and patient access. These cells have to be given in special centers of excellence. You know, when they first launched, there was a limited number of centers of excellence. Now there's an ever growing number of centers of excellence. And it's the managing the side effects is not as hard as people think. My daughter just graduated from medical school. She rotated through the CAR T inpatient infusion unit. The next generation of doctors are going to know how to give these therapies and manage the side effects. And then the FDA will back off on the requirements that you have to travel to a center of excellence and stay there for a month. I mean, that's hard for people that minimizes access. If you can bring these products into the community, if community doctors get comfortable managing the patients, you can imagine patient access will improve. So cost of goods will come down, patient access will go up. I don't think those are the hardest problems. The hardest problems is the challenge of cancer biology.